Welcome back, and thanks for still joining us. And uh, now we have a tourism uh, segment. Uh, the Egyptian Museum of Antiquities contains many important pieces of ancient Egyptian history, and it houses the largest collection of um, pharaonic antiquities and treasures of King Tutankhamun. The Egyptian government established the museum built in 1835, first near the Esbekeya Garden, and then the museum soon moved to Boulay in 1858, and then after that, uh, finally, it was removed in 1902 for the last time at the current museum in Tahrir Square. We have with us uh, joined uh, Mr. Mamdouh Gouda, a uh, tourist guide, who will be talking of, of with us a little bit about tourism. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Mamdouh. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us um, to start with, and this is definitely within uh, your expertise. Uh, the Egyptian uh, Museum is, uh, or the Grand Egyptian Museum, is one of the main, uh, you know, uh, um, attractions for tourists that they come. And looking at the importance, I'd like to know from you about the progress and the development of this uh, museum in, in the beginning. Okay, first of all, I uh, would like to say that it's great honors to be with you today here in Nile City International. Personally, the Salman Shri, thank you very much for hosting me today. And secondly, we have to talk firstly about the importance of the Egyptian Museum, which is considered to be one of the, um, the first building being built purposely to be as a museum, because most of the other museums which have been built before built to be as a building for some of the characters. But that one is one of the uh, first buildings being built purposely to be as a museum, and it contains over a quarter million artifacts there, telling us about the Egyptian history since the budding of the life here in Egypt till the time of the Greek Roman building. Since they opened it at 19... Oh, two, and by the way, that was a couple of, week, couple of weeks ago. They um, should celebrate of the anniversary, 111 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. it was Nove November uh, 15. Yeah. Uh, since they opened it, they uh, it hosting and housing most of the important artifacts there. And first of all, when they started building it at, at 1897, at the time of the Khedive uh, Abbas Helmi, and they opened it at 1902, they host and house almost of the artifacts which have been discovered at the time in Luxor and all the other sites here in Egypt and they start to display them in different um, holes there and by the way it consists of one in 107 holes and they are divided them into uh, seven um, sections such like the most important one that came to Tutankhamun which wasn't exist, exist when they opened it because Tutankhamun tomb been discovered uh, 1922 at that time so that hosting housing it and plus that they added the mummy rooms which is firstly it was consist of 11 mummies, but now it has more than 25 mummies in two sections in the second floor. But that they add the, the, uh, the new way of displaying as well, as the, uh, we have in the, um, the mummy room and also in the section of the king, the common, everything that has been displayed. Recently they add a new thing that the, um, the entrance, before uh, around four years ago we used the entrance and it's an exit, but now we have an entrance and exit that arranged especially when we had crowded at uh, the beginning of the day to from 9 o'clock, the, the thousands of tourists getting in and getting out in the same way. So now they're getting in uh, by the entrance and the exit from the other side. That They had a new restaurant and cafeteria as well. Uh, well, uh, as a tourist guide, uh, what would you show your tourists? What would be your favorite pieces in the museum? Oh, that's a very difficult question because <laughs> all of them actually... All of them are your all favorite? All of them are my, my favorite, but if you talk well, about especially, them... especially, exceptionally favorite. Especially the mask of the King Tutankhamun, that one magnificent, actually. Uh, that uh, is efficiently one of my favorite pieces in it. I've been all over Egypt, and this is just like when you stand in front of it and say, wow, this is over 3,000 years, and those people, they had no machines, they had no technology, and they could hammer it and mistake it. That is the one of my favorite ones. And there are many, actually, if you talk about the Old Kingdom ones, you will talk about a little statue belonging to the uh, King Kiyot, Khofu, the owner of the Great Pyramid. Mm -hmm. You know that man who built that one of the seven wonders of the world, the Great Pyramid? We didn't find any statue belonging to him, just a little one which is less than eight centimeters. Oh. Like that, and that's a magnificent one as well. It's in the, in the lower floor in it. That's mine. I would love to go with you uh, to the Egyptian Museum. Okay, mm -hmm. you're welcome. You sound like you're very passionate about things. Yes. You know them really by heart. That's and, true. Uh, Actually, <laughs> it is here. The yeah. Egyptian Museum is here. It is my, one of my favorite places. It is the house of the Egyptian history, actually. True. Yeah. If, I, <laughs> if I may ask you about the experience itself, because definitely looking at the artifacts, looking at the pieces within 
uh, the uh, Egyptian Museum. It's one of the fascinating. The experience is it's very different. It's very rich. As a matter of fact, it's so crowded with a lot of uh, pieces, and that's it could be a negative thing more than a positive thing, having lots and lots of things uh, within a single room. How do you see this display at this stage uh, for the Egyptian Museum? They, this is one of these at uh, disadvantage actually. You know, 132,000 artifacts in one building. Uh, I usually say something of it to my tourists and say that if you decide to see the, everything in the Egyptian Museum, one single piece for one single second, you need 132,000 seconds, which means over 43 hours. Wow. Yeah. So can you imagine that with this topless? That's so can amazing. you imagine that? And plus that the way it's displayed, you know, the best place just like for display is only the, 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 the mummy room and the things and cameras. But er everything is just like dark somewhat here and it's quite dusty here and yep. quite dusty here. And there's no explanation, you know, venues to, uh, for, or technology is also not, in, not involved as museums. If you look at museums around the world, usually technology is involved in order to help tourists to find more about these artifacts and pieces. Of course, they, we, have, we have one room which it has very good display in, tec in, 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 a, in a modern technical way, like the mummy the mum room, as, it, as I mentioned, and, yes, and, and the Kingston Cameron room. Exactly. It must be separately. It must be just like trying to uh, separate those pieces into other museums. We should specialize that museum to be only for something special, like the yeah. preserves of the Kingston Cameron, like the culture one, not only for the artifacts, but and fortunately we have later, inshallah, will be open the Grand Museum, yes, which exactly. next to the pyramid. So yeah. maybe that will just like, you know, decrease the uh, crowdness in that one in the in Tahrir Square. So I hope that they will just will resist in the way of this display in that one. Yeah. Well, um, sadly enough, during the revolution 2011, the museum was broken into. And correct me if I'm wrong, there were two months that were destroyed. And um, what other, anything major was also destroyed? Can you tell us a little about anything happened to the museum? Because it's a little worrisome that the um, Egyptian treasures, anything so people happening hearing to news them, about, about something disappearing, lost, something lost, something, something I don't know back. what, okay. any damages. Even okay. in Minya. That, that, that okay, I've been, I've been that many times and I've been actually um, uh, January 28th in Tahrir Square, um, one of the whole giant they uh, you were You yes, were in the I museum? And with many guides, by the way, not only me. Was there anything actually did you see that was missing but as an eyewitness? Um, not, not exactly. We didn't been involved inside, actually. But, but what I have heard, I haven't heard that there are two mummies being broken down. That's maybe true, maybe right, but I haven't okay. heard about it, okay? But what I have heard and what I, what, what I know, there were 31 pieces being, being robbed and about four of them they couldn't rob them, but they destroyed them. They, they believed and they thought those are golden. They are gilded, not golden. So they used them for breaking the, the showcases, yes. and they got the things. 31 pieces, I say, thanks God, we got almost all of them, or 25 of them, so we're missing six of them. Such like the one of them is the royal trombete of the uh, King St. Cameron. We got it back, and one of the statues well belongs to uh, uh, the father of King St. Cameron, King Akhenaton, that we got it back as well. But I haven't heard about the two mummies being broken. Maybe, yes, maybe you know, but... So it's almost a full recovery for what happened. Nothing major is missing now. Mm, not, 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 not so big ones. Maybe just like small pieces. But like I, when I you go to the museum now, since 2011, have you noticed a difference? Uh, no, no, there's no big difference, actually. No? They were because actually the, the, the other pieces that have been lost, and we found them there, we found them um, broken, they restored them in a very good way and displayed them. And actually, they wrote in some of the to show them how, how they restore them in the second floor belonging to the King's the Cameron, yes. So one of, one of the um, issues or negative sides with the Egyptian Museum that if a tourist entered by himself, it's very difficult to learn the story. So the tour guides definitely has a major and important role uh, to play in order to tell the story, you know, this you know, significant and important story about the history of Egypt. How do you usually do that? How do you usually, as a tour guide, tell the story in a nice way that makes people, you know, uh, relate themselves and, and, and get to know history more uh, about from the to perspective of the more. Egyptian Museum. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm not going to talk personally about myself, but all of my clients do the same. You know, the program for the tourists come, they used to come first to Cairns, spend two, a couple of days or three days, and then they go there. To start with the Egyptian Museum, it is our introduction. 
you know, when you go somewhere, it is your guideline to go to Egypt. So start telling them the sequence of the Egyptian history, because the Egyptian, the Egyptian museum is possessed of seven holes, as I, seven sections, as I mentioned. One of them is belong to the pre-dynastic period and the Old Kingdom, and the second one belongs to the, the Middle Kingdom and the um, first intermediate period, then the Middle Kingdom, and one of them belongs to the King Tutankhamun. So that gives the tourists the sequence of the Egyptian history. They learn that, they teach that firstly, the Egyptian museum, the budding of the Egyptian life, how they start, how did they create their life. Because, by the way, one of the, di this, um, the uh, things that distinguish the Egyptian civilization, those people didn't copy and paste. Those people create. You know, when we do something now nowadays, we just like get um, something and we develop it, we improve it. But those people create it, create the astronomical science, the medical science, they create it. So we start telling them about the Egyptian history, how the life starts, and then you go on by the Egyptian history. And they, as I mentioned, the, the Egyptian museum consists pieces from 3200 BC till 332 BC. So that tells us over 3,000 years of the Egyptian life, not, not three millennium from the Egyptian history, it is in there. So it is our introduction. And that makes us everything really, everything is easy to explain to them the other sites, because every, uh, every other sites will be related to what we mentioned in the Egyptian Museum. Um, let me take you to the, you just mentioned quickly, the Grand Museum that is going to be inaugurated by the pyramids. Uh, I know we've been preparing for it now, it's been a few years. How, how long do you think much time until it will actually uh, be inaugurated? And do you think and expect it's going to attract more tourists, maybe? And the, the disadvantages or the problems we had at the museum in Tahrir, are we going to avoid them in the Grand Museum? Anything different that's going okay. to be said at the Grand Museum? I, 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 by Do the you way, know anything the first, about it? The first three months after January 25th to 2011, uh, personally, I was taking the Tahrir Square and the Egyptian Museum as a 